This is a brief video on psychotic disorders. We're going to be talking about psychotic disorders that are listed in the DSM-5 for psychiatry. Um, and this video will specifically help you differentiate between schizophrenia, schizophreniform disorder, brief psychotic disorder, schizoaffective disorder, and mood disorders with psychotic features. We're going to be laying them out on this diagram to kind of help you keep them straight in your head and to differentiate between these disorders. We're going to be briefly discussing treatments for psychotic disorders, but we will have a more extensive overview of antipsychotic medications in a different video. And lastly, we're going to be talking about um, other psychiatric disorders that are often confused with psychotic disorders um, that are less related to schizophrenia. So let's start with an axis that goes from the bottom to the top. Diseases up here will have a longer duration of symptoms, whereas diseases down here will have a shorter duration of symptoms. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Let's begin with schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder uh, that has the following criteria. Patients need to have at least two of these five things, and at least one of these five things needs to be one, two, or three. So a patient needs at least one from this list of three and one other one from this list of five uh, to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Patient needs to have had these symptoms for at least one month. So um, these five things are delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized or catatonic behavior, and negative symptoms. Um, and negative symptoms include flat affect, anhedonia, flat speech, also called poverty of speech, and cognitive deficits. So a patient needs to have at least two of these for at least one month. The total disease length, however, which is the number that's more important to remember, uh, is over six months. And this includes the prodromal and residual phases. Now, this is a little confusing, so let me give you an example. For instance, a person can have delusions and hallucinations for one month. But say before that, for the five or six months before that one month of delusions and hallucinations, that person had hallucinations alone. So the total disease length is over six months, but they only met these criteria of having two of these five for at least one month, and that would be enough for schizophrenia. So you need at least delusions, hallucinations, or disorganized speech, and then one more from this list of five to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. So that's for six months total. What happens if it's for shorter than that? Brief psychotic disorder has the same criteria as schizophrenia. You need two of these five, but the total disease length is for greater than one day and less than one month. So much shorter time frame, and accordingly, it's much lower on this axis of duration of symptoms. Brief psychotic disorder can be caused by any major stressor, like a surgery or a major life change, moving to a new place. Um, if it follows pregnancy and the stressor is pregnancy, it's often called postpartum psychosis. What happens if a person meets these criteria, but it's been going on for more than one month and less than six months? We call that schizophreniform disorder, in which you meet the same criteria, again, for greater than one month, less than six months. So schizophreniform disorder is often thought of as an upgrade from brief psychotic disorder, and it's therefore a precursor to full schizophrenia. Now we're going to add a second axis across the bottom that describes psychotic disorders with involvement of mood. For these three here, there's low involvement of mood. There is no concurrent mood disorder. But as we'll see for these two, um, if you involve mood, you might have a different diagnosis. Schizoaffective disorder is what we're going to be talking about next. Schizoaffective disorder meets the criteria for schizophrenia, but it also meets the criteria for a mood disorder. This is usually major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder for the majority of the illness. So say a person has had schizophrenia for a year, and they have also have met criteria for a mood disorder for seven months of that year that could qualify for schizoaffective disorder. That person also needs to have delusions or hallucinations for at least two weeks without the mood disorder. 
So another way to think of schizoaffective is that it's psychosis in the absence of a mood disorder. It requires psychoses in the absence of a mood disorder. Um, this is kind of to make sure that the primary disorder is the delusions and the hallucinations. The primary disorder is the schizophrenia and not the mood disorder. So that's with that's essentially schizophrenia with light involvement of mood. You still meet the mood criteria, but you primarily have schizophrenia, as evidenced by the fact that you have delusions and hallucinations present for at least two weeks without a mood disorder. Now, what if the mood disorder is a more prominent component of your mental illness? Then you might have a mood disorder with psychotic features. And I'll tell you about that one next. Mood disorder with psychotic features is further down on the axis of mood involvement and therefore will involve more mood symptoms. So in mood disorder with psychotic features, and this is often called depression with psychotic features, major depressive disorder with psychotic features, or bipolar disorder with psychotic features, a patient meets the criteria for a mood disorder, and that's SIG E caps for major depressive disorder or dig fast for mania in bipolar one. And they also have additional symptoms of psychoses. So in mood disorder with psychotic features, you primarily have a mood disorder with psychotic features, whereas in schizoaffective, you primarily have schizophrenia, but you also meet the criteria for a mood disorder for the majority of your illness. Now we're going to be talking about these criteria briefly here, but quick. In mood disorder with psychotic features, you do not have delusions or hallucinations with, for two weeks without the mood disorder. And that's how you know that it's not primarily a psychotic illness like in schizoaffective. So you can think of this as a constant mood disorder with intermittent psychosis, whereas in schizoaffective, you have to have psychoses in the absence of the mood disorder. We're going to be talking about these criteria very briefly because they're very relevant to mood disorder with psychotic features. In major depressive disorder, you need a depressed mood plus four of the following criteria, sleep changes, interest loss, guilt, energy lacking, cognition or concentration reduction, appetite changes, psychomotor changes like psychomotor agitation or psychomotor retardation, and suicidal ideation, suicidal thoughts, or suicidal attempts. And that's the SIG E caps for depression. Um, and that would, you would need depressed mood plus four of the SIG E caps to be diagnosed with depression. And then if you have concurrent symptoms of psychoses, you could have mood disorder with psychotic features. Um, in order to have bipolar disorder with psychotic features, you need to meet the dig fast criteria for mania. So bipolar type one for mania, you need three of distractibility, irresponsibility, irritability, or impulsiveness, grandiose thoughts and behaviors, flight of ideas, activity increase, sleep decrease, and talkativeness or talkative behaviors. And if you have three or more of these for a given period of time and you're diagnosed with bipolar disorder and you also show symptoms of psychoses, you could have bipolar disorder with psychotic features. So this diagram just kind of helps you lay it out um, and see how these diseases are related. They all involve psychoses, some of them to different extents than others, and some of them have mood involved to different extents, and some of them have a longer or shorter duration of symptoms. We're gonna to briefly touch on the treatment for psychotic disorders. Um, usually you first go to antipsychotics, and this is just a brief overview, so don't make this the only pass of this material. There are first generation, also called typical antipsychotics, and these are often thought of treating the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. And these were the first four things on that list for schizophrenia on the previous slide. The first generation or typical antipsychotics are haloperidol plus the drugs that end in azine, like thiazine or clopromazine. The positive symptoms that the first generation antipsychotics are good for treating are delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, and disorganized catatonic behavior. These were the first four things on that list. The second generation, atypical antipsychotics, are often thought of as treating the negative symptoms, but a lot of times they also treat the positives. But we're going to list them with the negatives here briefly. 
second generation antipsychotics include risperidone, ziprazidone, ketiapine, olanzapine, eripiprazole, and clozapine, where clozapine is the most effective of the second generation antipsychotics and is often used as last line for psychotic disorders. Each of these have side effects like QT prolongation, and some of them have specific side effects like olanzapine causes metabolic syndrome. I suggest studying these elsewhere. We're not going to be talking about them any more extensively here. The negative symptoms of psychotic disorders, again, are flat affect, anhedonia, flat speech or poverty of speech, and cognitive deficits. And again, oftentimes second generation can treat negative symptoms and positive symptoms. So uh, we'd like to think of it this way, but it's not exactly that simple. First generation antipsychotics work on the neurotransmitter dopamine, whereas second generation antipsychotics work on dopamine and serotonin. Um, again, that's not a hard and fast rule. That's just a general trend for these two groups. Lastly, I want to talk about a few related disorders that should not be confused with the psychotic disorders that we talked about on the previous slide. These sound the same and might have similar features, but don't exactly qualify as psychotic disorders. So let's get to them really quickly. There's schizoid personality disorder. In schizoid personality disorder, a person lacks interest and is detached from social relationships. A person is apathetic to social relationships and has restricted emotional expressions. So a quick way to remember that is that schizoids avoid. They avoid other people, avoid social relationships, and schizoids also avoid emotions and are apathetic to others. Sounds like schizophrenia, but it's different. It's schizoid personality disorder. Next is schizotypal personality disorder. This is a person who exhibits a pattern of extreme discomfort interacting socially. Uh, they have dis dis distorted cognitions and perceptions. They have strange beliefs, sometimes magical thinking. Uh, a lot of times they look eccentric and wear odd colors or feathers or weird hats. Uh, so schizotypal people are essentially weird people with strange beliefs, magical thinking, and discomfort interacting socially. Has the schizo again, but it's different from schizophrenia. Lastly is delusional disorder or having a delusional personality. Delusions are fixed false beliefs that are believable but unrealistic in that person's culture. Um, an example of this is a woman who thinks she is married to a celebrity and she insists that uh, she has secret conversations with that celebrity and that celebrity is hiding their relationship. Um, she's delusional about it. Um, a person with delusional disorder has no prominent hallucinations, thought disorder, mood disorder, or significant flattening of affect that would otherwise qualify them for a psychotic disorder or other psychiatric illness. So it's almost like a diagnosis of exclusion. If you have a few fixed false beliefs that are believable, um, unrealistic in your culture, and that don't significantly impact your life or daily functioning, you might have delusional disorder. This has been a brief video on psychotic disorders in the DSM-5. I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.